Hey sportsmen, John Bergsman here in downtown Curtis, sandwiched in between South Manistique Lake and Big Manistique Lake. We're here in front of the Fish and Hunt Shop, which is your one-stop shopping for all your fishing needs. Join us today, largemouth bass on South Manistique Lake. We killed them. You're gonna love this show. Stay tuned. The Elastec Zero strikes again. <laughs> oh, this is a dogger, Scott. Scotty will probably slide in and, and take him for us. Look at this. There we go. Beautiful nice fish. fish. Now we're gonna show you without staging that right there. Little teaching show today here. See that beautiful green cabbage reed? And I'm working and Scott, what Scott's got us doing is pumping our Little 1850 crest liner right down this shore, nice and slow. And what I've got is my old trusty Elastec Zero in the purple haze color, little 16th ounce weedless VMC. And what we're doing, as you can see, beautiful fish. Healthy Scott in this lake, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, they are. They're awesome. Beautiful fish, I'll show you that in the sunlight. Nothing better than South Manistique Lake up here, Central Upper Peninsula, Curtis, Michigan. We'll go ahead and let this little one go. Not really very little for a first fish. And to finish what I was saying, Chase will show you Scott's up front working a little bit of a punch bait on this reed line. And in the background, you can see we've got a real shallow sand flat and it tumbles right into a real distinct weed edge. And what's really good about this presentation is that Scott's running the boat from the bow using a heavier presentation that's gonna punch through the weeds and really get down in there. I'm in the back of the boat, casting behind him, just twitching a little Cinco style bait, the Elastec Zero being my favorite here, Strike King bait. Purple Haze again is probably one of my favorite colors. And then I've just got a thin little wire protector and all that does is just keep me relatively weedless. And you know, you'll pick up a hunk of cabbage here or there, but you saw sometimes you pick up a hunk of cabbage in the mouth of a great big large mouth. So stay tuned for more of this. There he is. Get him, yeah. <laughs> oh, a nice one too, Scott. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that background, an empty cottage in an un and an unprotected, Scott, talk to me. How'd you get that? Well, actually, just I skipped up in between the two pontoons. That fish was, actually, you saw me. I casted three times back by the engine, and it took a cast that skipped almost three quarters of the way up through the pontoon to get him to bite. Nice fish. That is another beauty. Yeah, let's get him back. But it looks so good in that clear water too, don't they, John? Oh, they do. Don't know what he is. He's running right at me. Probably a little smallmouth where we're sitting. Oh, the biggest look bluegill. <laughs> nice. <laughs> we're going to show you that because this is the other thing that South Manistique Lake is known for. Awesome, awesome bluegills. Look at that, you can see it. He struck a rubber worm, and I mean, he hit it hard. The Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Strike King Lures, tie one on. Lose, feel the difference. And Wave Pro, best ride on the water. There he is. There he is. <laughs> That's just scripted. 
Scotty. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know what's going to happen too, Scotty? I'm going to go in and be greedy and get another one. Yep, absolutely. I'd make sure you get one underneath that boat. I will. Here we go. Come on up here. Here we go. Nice fish. Wow. Another great self manistique bass. Boy, they're pretty. You know what? The shade of that dock, Scotty. I'm going to get it. Oh. Let's get him back so John can get one. Yeah, you I see, can. he must have been. He must have been. I saw a little scar yeah, on Yeah, he's got a little scar on his cheeks on both sides. So he's a fighter. He's been in a battle. Yes, he has. There we go. Wow. Fish. Oh yeah. Way to go, John. Look at that. <laughs> There's more in there, I think. That's funny. Right under the back of that pontoon, this is the smallest one of the day, but we're back in some deep water docks. Get in there. Oh. That one's in there though. <laughs> that one's in there for sure. There he is. Yeah, get him. Get him. Nice one. Look at that one. <laughs> it's a big one. There we go, John. <laughs> I'm sorry. You land that. I'm going right back in. <laughs> Boy, he's really tussling. Oh, my goodness, Scott. That is so good. <laughs> I tell you, I love this new Lou's Custom Black Rod and Reel Boy. Yeah, talk to me about that because that sucker is awesome. And I just got stripped. There is another fish in there. Yeah, Mark, Mark Copley, Scott, told me, John, you got to get some of those rods and reels. Talk to us about them. You fished with them for a while. There we go. <laughs> Such a nice fish. Got that Ned rig right in the corner of the mouth. Or excuse me, the, uh, what do you call it? Not a Ned rig. What is it? Hold on, let me think about it. Nico rig. Nico, okay. that's right. So Nico rig right in the corner of the lift there. Way up underneath that pontoon boat. First couple casts behind the motor, I obviously didn't get hit, but boy, way up inside. That's what you're looking for when you come to South Manistique Lake. Let's get her back. You're gonna take me back because I lost my worm on a fish in there. <laughs> there I have a cast that got in there too, and, and he, I didn't hook him, but he took my worm. <laughs> Better fish. Yep, that's a good oh, one. Oh, that's a big one. Wow. <laughs> Scotty. Wow. wow. Tell you what, we might have found a pad bite. Yeah, and I know there's a lot more pads. Oof. There is some nice fish. Yeah. Talk about what you're running there. Pardon me? Talk about what you're throwing. Yeah. Oh, I was just going, we got through the pads here in front of everything. I grabbed a uh, Magnum Rage Bug and I was punching it into the pads, just kind of throwing it in there, just letting it sit, and the line just jumped. Exactly. Hey, when you rigged that, Scott, talk about that after you released that. Talk about the rigging on that thing. Because a lot of people, I noticed, you're rigged right to your braid. Yeah, I go right to the braid. Because obviously when you're doing close quarters battle like that, you want it to be braided, braided. But what I do is I actually snell knot the big VMC four rod Magnum flipping hook. So the line actually goes through the eye and it's snelled on the back. What and then happens, you've got and a weight there too, don't you? Yeah, I got a, this is a three quarter ounce tungsten weight, my Strike King. I have it pegged with a rubber nail. But what happens when you snell knot a hook, when you pull it tight, see how it kicks out? See that snell knot makes that lure Get a kick out. Set, yeah, right? so it's going out to the side real quick. So I'm gonna grab a another rage bug. I'm just gonna cast right back up to the pads. Yeah. <laughs> this is my favorite color, Falcon Lake Crow. I throw this all over the country. 
you want to bring it down as close to straight as you can and bury that hook in there. And then bring that right down tight. So you have a nice, small, compact, but heavy package that you can flip right in there. The Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, leaders in trolling technology. Trax Tech, the ultimate fishing system. And Garmin. That's another tank. Oh, I got a, I got a net, another five, five pounder. <laughs> Look at this freaking thing. You wonder if thunder crickets work around weeds. Look at this. Look at this. Like Scotty just explained to you, I can't even get all of the weeds off of that. Look at that thing in the central UP sun. Curtis, Michigan, South Manistee Lake, Scott Cormier. No, I'm joking. <laughs> he is the king up here right now, boys. But we are putting it to you with, and at the end of this segment here, we're gonna talk to you. Scott's gonna give you a great expose on just exactly how you can put fish like this in your boat using Strike King products. Well, today we had to use a lot of different techniques here up in Curtis for the largemouth on this lake today. So some of the best things today for me, um, obviously I throw a jig quite a bit and John will attest to that, that I was throwing a half ounce Strike King structure jig uh, with a Rage Craw trailer on it. Um, then later in the day, once the wind picked up, we were fishing some of the outside weed lines, the Thunder Cricket was the ticket. Um, you saw us catch numerous big fish. John caught a few nice ones too. Um, it's a great search bait for around the docks, but also in the weed lines and on the drop-offs. Um, you saw me doing some punching here in the pads. Um, I was throwing a Magnum Rage Bug with a tungsten weight, a uh, half or three quarter ounce, four rod hook, just punching that through the grass, letting it hit the bottom and giving it a couple pumps and then moving on to the next cast. Um, so that was really the major, um, oh, and also, I can never forget, John's favorite Z20. This one was the PB&J, which we were throwing quite a bit. Also the Purple Haze works great, one of John's favorite colors. Um, and you can work this many different ways. Some people will Texas rig it, you can also rig it like we were today, wacky rig with a VMC um, tungsten jig head and uh, casting it around all the docks. It has a great fall, but it's very, very buoyant and very, very durable. So it'll last for more than a couple fish. This 3X stuff is the best. Yeah. Keep them coming. I'm keeping them coming. There you go. This dock system has got some fish on it. We just caught a big one on the rate on the uh, swimmer. Now we got us not such a huge one, but fish nonetheless. And that was just the first cast in there. Scotty will probably nail another one here. Got to grow up. Got to catch up with Scott's fish. Look at that. Right in the stuff though. You got to be in there if you want to catch fish. So today the most critical thing that we had as far as tools to our disposal that uh, other than our rods and reels of course was our garment. Now on our Garmin, what you have to pay close attention to with all of this extremely tight, I, uh, tight uh, depth lines, it gives you the ability to find those critical spots on points and in coves where you already know there's gonna be fish because it's got close proximity to deep water. And then also we have it on a combo screen so you can see that we're over the right type of cabbage weed when we're, especially when we're casting thunder crickets, if you see in the water right here, you'll see a real sparse, you know, you get a, a combination of all kinds of different weeds. And yet we got decent depth. We got four or five, six feet of water and you got weeds coming up maybe halfway. That thunder cricket shines when it comes to coming through structure. It doesn't, you know, tangle up and clog up like a lot of things do. It seems to ride up with that with that metal bill, not only giving it that vibration, but it seems to bounce off things really, really well. And you can run it through some pretty heavy stuff. 
and really do a good job of it. Now, it's super important to run your screen like this. We always do this because when we're running out of an area where we think the bite is slowed, you can kind of pay attention to the structure there. Of course, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can look for light, light structures. But I'll zoom out one more time and you'll see right there, there's a finger that sticks out of seven foot where there's clearly it's gonna be some gravel or some sand or hard bottom and then you have an inside cut. Again, these are the types of things you're looking for. Bass, walleye, pike, no matter what game fish you're looking for, they're always gonna hold on unique structures, whether it's the tip of a point, an inside turn, in close proximity to deeper water. So put these tips to work for you. Have a good graph unit that's a combo and it has a good chip. My Garmin 993SV is an awesome low cost unit. The Fisherman's Digest is brought to you by Crestliner, forged with strength, defined by durability. Heads up. Heads up. Heads up, you mean like us and fish? Can you get him out, Scott? Yeah, here, oh, it's a oh, horse. it's a horse. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, wow, wow. Wow, there's a biggie. Come here, honey. Come here. <laughs> yeah, baby, look at that one. Wow. Unbelievable, Scotty. Look at that. Yeah. Talk about that first cast, bud. Wow. Look where that jig is, right in the top of her mouth. Well, that fish has got to be 20, 21 inches long. Oh, that's a five, five and a half pounder. Yeah, that's a good fish right there. The first thing I'd do if I was going to learn how to dot cast is literally go with somebody like Scott who's dot casted a lot because you can see what's right and what's wrong. When you watch him cast 20 feet under a boat or just to the edge of a boat, as you can see right now in this dock casting expose, to the edge of the boat's not good enough right now. There's a great cast. He just put it, you know, over the river and through the woods, so to speak. I'll try to go under that dock, but see, I stopped short. If you had to get 20 foot under that dock, it would be better. And that's kind of the whole idea that Scott, I'm sure, would tell you is dock casting is about getting as far under the structure as possible and giving yourself a chance to present to that fish. And I would go with somebody who knows how to dock cast. That's literally it. That's kind of like, I mean, if you were gonna learn, try to learn how to walleye fish, you'd probably wanna go with me, especially if you were trolling. If you wanna learn how to dock cast, go with a guy who dock casts a lot and catches a lot of fish dock casting. And I fish with a lot of people, you know, all the way around the country, obviously, but you'll, you'll have people that will just, just hurry up a cast or something. They'll just, they won't take their time. I try to make sure my boat's in the perfect position so I can make the perfect cast because usually you get one really good cast in before you hit a dock or make any extra noise. So if they get the one perfect cast in there, you usually catch the biggest fish on the dock right away. And I'm always trying to find to put it in the hardest position possible between the dock, underneath a motor, someplace where most people won't be able to cast because sometimes the easy fish have already been caught. Right, one of the things that I think too is what, what, uh, what uh, Scott mentioned is, is those really hard casts produce big fish and that's because those big fish are territorial. They're gonna come and crush anything that comes in their area. And, and uh, you know, so that's why it's important to make that right cast early in the sequence. Wow, look at that. Wow. You want me to net him? Yeah, let's see what this one, yeah. Big great. Yeah? Yeah, go ahead, John. He's got me down in the weeds. I'm just holding on to him right now. Yeah. Here he comes. Wow. He's got that thunder cricket gone. Gone, <laughs> Scotty. <laughs> Look at that. Wow. You know, when you come to the little town of Curtis, Michigan, right here in the Manistique Lakes Recreation Area, what you get is an abundance of lakes, small resorts, and businesses that are all devoted to taking care of the traveler, the tourist, and this is a four seasons place. We're here in the summer, of course, doing a fishing show, and right behind you, you see South Manistique Lake where we filmed an awesome bass show. 
just a little few hundred yards that way, Big Manistique Lake, which is known for walleye, smallmouth bass, and perch, and then North Manistique Lake as well. But what a lot of people also understand is that Curtis is an awesome fall and winter destination as well. This town doesn't shut down. This town stays open. There's tons of mom and pop's businesses as well as locally owned resorts that are here to service you for ATVing in the fall, snowmobiling in the winter, and of course with all this water ice fishing. Curtis, Michigan is a year-round tourist destination that does an awesome job of servicing those people that choose to make the Manistique Lakes there Recreation go, Area their spot okay. to take a trip. What a beautiful fish. Scotty said, well, let's just pull up to this dock. I'll bet there's a fish under it. Well, if you're looking up for a great spot to go fishing, I mean an awesome spot. Scott, this has got to be one of the best UP lakes, period. It really is. I mean, there's so many different fish up here, and anybody can come up and have fun. Exactly. Thunder crickets, dock fishing, you name it. Thanks for joining us today here on the Fisherman's Digest. Closed captioning brought to you by WavePro. Best ride on the water online at waveproshock.com.